Hi guys, I'm Mike and this is F1 Fanatic. Welcome back to a special episode on the channel, a special podcast. Obviously, one guy that you know, obviously from watching both our channels that we've collaborated with. And Aaron, you can see him on screen with me today. And that is Raz from Raz on F1. And actually, at the time of recording, it is actually Raz's birthday. So, Raz, happy birthday and welcome back. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Mike. Um, you know, very much appreciate the birthday messages as well. I couldn't think of anything better to uh, spend my 36th birthday other than spending it with you doing an interview, actually. Um, so cheers for having me on. No problem at all, mate. And obviously, you know, if you followed Raz on F1 as well as following our channel, you'll realise that recently... Uh, Raz has had some the opportunity to interview some absolutely amazing guests. And it all started off with uh, Matty G. And then since then, there have been some more guests. So really, what today's episode is, is it's really kind of uh, just having a chat. I'm sure we'll kind of have some uh, general F1 chit chat in there as well uh, from it. And, uh, you know, got a couple of questions uh, from other people as well. It, you know, it, it's just trying to get a hold of it because I know this has been a, a kind of experience that you, you've been wowed by, the fact that you've been able to talk to these kind of, as you say, F1 celebrities. It's an amazing experience. So, uh, Raz, how has it been? I mean, uh, as you say, Mike, I mean, um, I mean, we started this... Um, I mean, we. I start, first of all, I started this channel four years ago because... For, for medical reasons, to be honest, um, and my doctor told me to uh, get talking, so I got talk, you know, so I got talking about Formula One. This is how the this is how the channel started, and um, and then um, we we actually remember when we did the we did two episodes where we couldn't find the top topic, so we just. I just called it the unplanned Formula One chat, and it sort of went from from there. And um, originally, it started. I mean, I I never I never planned to sort of do a podcast slash. Um, you know, I never sort of um, planned it to be a podcast slash um, YouTube show, but uh, it was it. It was originally just to to get other YouTubers involved as well, but then uh, you know, then then I had the, the lack of having Matty G on, um, to whom I'm gonna be forever grateful because he was the first one that out of the Formula One uh, celebs, if you want to call it that way, you know, um, to actually. Agreed to do it with me, and uh, he really enjoyed it, and um, and then it just grew from there. Yeah, it's it, it really did grow from there, and that Matty interview was, you know, absolutely fantastic. It was just, and I, I think you know, obviously we we've done it a fair few times. We had a season review that was like five hours, didn't we? Uh, in terms yes. of it. So we know that kind of talking F1 comes easy to you and it's easy to us. But that's what it came across uh, with Matt as well. And you, you asked, you know, as you always do it in terms into it's good questions in terms of what it leads to. And with Matty, you got the whole kind of, well, I suppose, X, what the F1 lineup with Jess moving across to uh, motorsport.com uh, to head up things um, for them. But you've had Tommy as well, obviously, who... I, it started uh, what the F1 what what was it like uh, you know interviewing the three of them because obviously they've had a successful podcast what the F1 is a successful uh, just media outlet um, as, as well was it, it having probably watched their podcast before it, it probably felt a little bit surreal to speak to all of them 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, Matty was just, you know, he's so, they're all so down to earth. And, you know, I mean, every, I mean, I'm still buzzing from the first one I ever did. And, and you know, I'm not taking anything away from any, anybody that comes on to, uh, on to chat for one with me. I love it. You know, I love everyone that comes on. You know, because everyone that supports me, and but I must admit, it was it was kind of quite surreal to be, um, you know, because um, because I I the very first uh, the the very first time I watched um, mate was when he was doing. My my's my G's um rage Ki- Formula One rage kitchen or whatever it was called, and uh, I actually feature feature his channel still still on my on my channel, you know. So so if you want to check out my's old stuff, uh, you know you can find it on there. But you know, and then because he's. Everyone was so down to earth, you know, like from me and, up, you know, it was just, and they and they don't want to, they don't see themselves as like Formula One celebs, so to speak, you know. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm still in touch with with all of them. Um, in fact, I'm still in touch with everyone that I've been uh, had the pleasure with. Um, having on the podcast but you know you know and it, you know it gave, it gave me great confidence as well so it was great yeah i i think you saw your confidence grow with uh each interview and then obviously you know it's it's exciting to kind of be with uh media outlets of what the f1 and how they've grown and um, from there but it's obviously led to um, you know, other v- interviews with people like Mark Priestley, who obviously is F1 Elvis, ex uh, Formula One mechanic with uh, McLaren, which is an amazing experience. Has a great YouTube uh, channel himself, uh, with obviously going through the technical side of Formula One, and and obviously then bigger media outlets with Natalie Pinkman and Will Buxton. I, obviously, you know, there's some that kind of channels were dream to kind of interview and kind of chat f1 with and uh have a talk and go on their channel and you, you managed to get you know all three of them as well as uh lisa hardy as well wasn't it yeah i mean that, that, that's just surreal um and as i said i'm still buzzing from every single one of them i mean i don't want to you know i don't want to sort of um put one over the other because you know i as I said, I'm buzzing from every single one. I'm buzzing from every single collaboration, whether it's you or me, or whether it's um, Sam, Sam or Gara, or you know whoever comes on. But you know, it just, it just. I must admit, like when I had, um, you know, when I had Matty, uh, I knew, I knew that it was, I knew that there was a chance of here having Jess. Um, um, but then again, it, I, I, because how it started was that uh, because me, me was just like out, out the blue. I didn't plan to have it as a, as a chat show at the time. Um, you know, I just messaged him and said, uh, you know, I just messaged him and said, do you, do you fancy coming on my channel? So at, at that time, I never... Um, it, I never sort of, um, you know, I never sort of planned it to go turn it into a series, as in with episode numbers. You know, I, mean? I never planned it, and so, um, but the, the, then um, I put a tweet out um, and actually put the idea out, um, and that was about a week. Uh, that was. <laughs> At three o'clock in the morning, I put the tweet out, I think, 
um, while I'm while I was in bed because I've got my phone near my bed because like you know um, in case I need to call the carers or something. Um, obviously I was I couldn't sleep so I I put the idea out and um, you know him. I thought nobody would respond. Um, I and then um, I I tweeted like you know I I mentioned I mean I mentioned uh, Jess. I mentioned uh, Tommy. Tommy. I mentioned um, Lisa. I mentioned um, Mark, and I mentioned um, Natalie. And um, and uh, you know, and then and then they said they said I, I thought they would never sort of uh, they would just tell me to, you know I never expected it to um, for any of them to respond, um, but you know, <laughs> like four four hours later at seven o'clock I had like um, just saying. Count me in, and um, you know, and Natalie Pinkham said as well. She said, "Count me in," um, which which was absolutely which was absolutely awesome. And um, there's a quite quite a funny story about it because um, I did the interview with Jess, and um, um, I did the interview. Because at the time I was I was down to have jury service. I was like down to have jury service. Um so I, 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 that was meant to start on the twenty like that was meant to start like on a week um after I after I sent that tweet. Um and I and then I said um or two weeks after I sent that tweet, and then um, obviously the people that I want uh, that I want that, that had already said yes, I wanted to get them on as soon as possible, and um, it was it was quite a marathon, but it was quite an enjoyable marathon to be honest. Yeah, I I bet it was. It's just I it's an incredible experience, and you know this is what your channel has always been about and it's you're just a passionate f1 up front we we know obviously you know how how it's helped you with your mental health and in terms of uh anxiety in front and then now having this platform to share it with you know other people passionate within the community and living like you know a dream in some uh for people which is working within <clears throat> the industry of formula one and uh, having jobs within it and uh, to share you know your your passion with the sport with them and going from there it, it, it's brilliant and it moves me on to uh first question from steckleton and uh he goes and how do you kind of were there any influences in how you made the podcast and i know obviously it's the unplanned f1 chat but did you? How did you plan in terms of meeting the guests? Because you know, in all due respect to me, for me and you, we can just kind of rock up and chat in in terms of everything. And did, was did you approach it any different to how uh, something where we literally just click on record and see where we end up uh, 40, 50 minutes later, or do you literally um, do you sit down certain questions? Do you have no. you know, specific ones? Do any research to them, or is it just? Yeah, completely unplanned, as the podcast would say. Well, I mean, the thing is, um, I mean, I want to keep the format as as sort of natural as it will always be. You know, I never planned it to start with. I never in a million years um, did plan to have anyone even remotely uh, interested in coming on, um, like from a, from a, from a, especially not from a Formula One sort of working people, you know, like you know, and and I always tweet them 
like even now that we've done it, I always make sure that, that you know, I keep in touch, but I never take it for granted. And, you know, it, it, it still brings a tear to my eye even now, um, you know, that, that I managed to do it because it was, it was utterly unplanned. And with regards to planning it, I think, um, you know, the, it, I never planned anything, right? I, I, honest to God, I never planned anything. You know, the questions that you see, the questions I asked, um, they are not planned. In terms of how do I go about the guests, it's, and I, I had this on me because me, me, me Instagram and me Twitter and my Twitter messages have gone absolutely wild since I've had, you know, wild in terms of um, the amount of messages I get for myself. Um, um, I think, I think it was absolutely, it, it was pure luck. Um, you know, and and um, you know, I know Matty and Jess and Tommy for you know for that matter that they, they, they will you know they, they will probably say that it, it, you know it's all down to me. But I think, in fact, I know that uh, that Natalie Natalie the first um, video. Sh- I uh, the she ever saw on my channel was was the one I did with Matt, um, and um, it was Jess as well. Um, so I do owe owe a massive load. I do owe you know a massive thanks to Matty G. Um, you know, but what you gotta remember is for us. You know, um, you know, f- for me, um, f- and probably for you, when I, when, if you, you know, when I first started, I, I sort of, so oh, they're never gonna respond, you know, because, because they've got other things to do, but f- in extra fact, they made, uh, I know for a fact that they made the time. To to um come on the podcast and and you know I, I you know the other thing to be in mind is that because I can't play you know I, I, I you know there's no there I haven't played any of them you know and um, we just do it they just do it because they they love it you know and uh, because I'm on benefits I can't play them obviously but the, you know it, it's just nice. To, it's just nice to sort of have a, you know, to, to have a sort of uh, sort of feedback from people that, that, that know Formula One inside out that actually say that you're doing a good job. And, you know, I just love it. No, I bet. I, it, it is a kind of nice boost and it, it shows what the F1 community is like it's positive and i would say you know you, you might you called yourself lucky there but you, you kind of make your own luck in terms of you're relentless in terms of you'll ask you, you know publicly tweet it you'll go over and over again and you know I, even with the matt gallagher one i remember talking to you back way back in uh i think probably october around about near time in our first few months as a channel and asking me to uh message Matt for you and you were tweeting Matt and you know you've tweeted these people a fair few times but you didn't take it as if they didn't reply you're like well, okay it doesn't matter but it doesn't stop you from you know doing it again and then they've replied so you've made them kind of go oh actually yeah no this guy does keep asking then they check you out and you know come on to it and you share your F1 experience and at the end of the day the key theme is I'm an F1 fan you're an F1 fan they're F1 fans you know, that's the reason why they're in the sport and why they work in the sport, you know, that we love. And I, you know, it's crazy on that. And I, I was going to ask, has it changed 
uh, not necessarily the way that you view F1 in terms of when talking to them, but have you have you learned things uh, within F1? What's been the most interesting things you've learned about F1? Because obviously a few of them are integral to the media side of F1 or someone like um, Mark Priestley, who's actually worked in F1. What's What's been the uh, most interesting thing you've learned from the experience? I mean, for me, I mean, as I said, the, I mean, the, if I could just, um, I'm going to tell you something before I answer that question, but um, I actually, the thing was, like, uh, we're Buxton, he's been tweet, we've been tweeting me, he's been tweeting me for, for a while, sort of, you know, in like, nothing specific, and then he said to me, Oh, all of a sudden I get a tweet saying, um, can, can you make some time for me? Um, and I was like, are you, are you for real? Are you for, are you for real? Are you, of course you can come on anytime. You know, it, it's, and the same thing goes for Natalie Pinkham. I mean, funny story. Um, I actually didn't think that she was real. When I first got the, got the response, I actually saw I said, I use the real Natalie Pinking. And I mean, like, um, and she said, no, no, uh, you know, you know, and, and that, that is just, that was just, um, over, you know, that was sort of brought a tear to my eye. But in terms of learning stuff, it's just, I mean, the fact is, um, um, I've learned a, ma a massive deal because I'm now actually right into. I mean, I've extended my list of um, of um, people that I would love to have on, but I'm going to I'm going about it differently. I'm going about you know I'm not just tweeting them. I'm actually writing emails to their managers um, I'm writing uh, you know I'm writing letters you know well, you know I'm sort of writing them um, I'm taking it a lot more you know it's sort of like you said I don't take no for an answer but you know this is sort of I think I think Mark Priestley and um, Natalie and will, have you know that they've actually and every and Jess and Tommy and Lisa Hardy as well. They've all you know they they've all made you, you know they've all given me the confidence to do it. And now now um you know because I I mentioned them in the letter um you know I've had to uh, I do mention them uh, the people I had that I've had on and it it just you know, you don't you don't just get no for an answer. You know, I mean, uh, I, I you know it's 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 like um, nothing has been concrete yet. But it's uh, I mean I'm still trying. But the but the main thing is my I've got the confidence now to to not just tweet the driver, but actually write to their managers and and actually make it a bit more. You know, a bit more official, so to speak. Um, but we just see how, how it goes. I mean, I'm just, I'm just living. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I still can't believe it. So I bet, mate. I bet it, it, it still. You probably have to pinch yourself with, uh, you know, some situations. But I, you can tell that your confidence has grown. Uh, through each of the interviews and it has given you stuff in terms of your interview style, the type of questions you ask and the type of conversations you're having. Obviously, you've always had that knowledge there and, you know, passion for doing it. But, you know, I, it's almost you get a little bit of vindication. The more you get comfortable to speaking around uh, those type of people, the easier it gets. And I, I suppose uh, a question for you would be what's, What's the plan for the unplanned F1 chat, you know, going forward? Is it, you know, to try and get 
more interviews? Is it, uh, well, obviously it's an interview based podcast, but is it just going to be like, uh, even when you can get a guest, you shove them on in terms of it, or is it going to become more of a regular thing or are you going to release it on uh, stuff like Spotify and stuff, or is it just going to be a YouTube only thing? Yeah. Uh... For now, it's just going to be uh, YouTube only. I think uh, I don't like having too much, you know, too many things on, uh, like, you know, I, I, I want to keep it all in terms of, um, I want to keep it all in terms of all in one place. You know, and, uh, you know, and then I like the fact that it's on YouTube. Um, where do I go from there? I mean, it's not going to be a reg, you know, as I said, this is just because I'm having these to live on. I don't want really, to, uh, you know, if somebody says to me, oh, if somebody is really, really keen about doing, you know, really loves Formula One, I'm not going to forget the, forget the, um, where I come from sort of thing. You know, I'll always have, have YouTubers on. Um, you know, but again, as as in when you know, like I I make time, they make time. Um, you know, and and then, but in terms of the celebs, I mean, I've got a list of currently forty people that I would love to have on. Uh, but it's just a case of, um, you know. I, I know for a fact that I will never get the forty people, you know, the forty people on. But it's just, um, it's just sort of, you know, you, you know, it's just, uh, you know, I just gotta try, try and get, you know, whenever I can get a celeb on, I get a celeb on. You know what I mean? Um, I think if you, if you know, if you know, um. If you've seen the Will Buxton one, um, I think uh, you know where what my ultimate dream is. Um, um, but uh, as I said, nah, you know that's that's a long that's a long that's a long uh, you know that's a long way off. I mean, nothing. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not suddenly gonna just you know I'm not not suddenly gonna appear on. Uh, alongside uh, Natalie Pinkham, um, you know, on Sky, you know, in the, the, that would that would just be, or or Will Buxton, um, he, you know, uh, doing pit, pit pass uh, or pedic pass, or you know, um, but having said that, uh, if they do, if if that can come about, then I wouldn't say no, especially because. Of uh, the current situation, like with uh, with the with the Zoom and everything, because because I can't travel that well, but uh, you know because of my disability, th- that doesn't mean, especially now. I mean, yeah, you're not here, you know, you're not physically here, and when you you know, there's no there's no reason why I can't one day be on sky on sky via video link you know in there so so that then you know um but in terms of of um i i still gonna continue doing the channel um i still gonna continue doing the channel and i'm still gonna continue sort of uh doing the podcast like doing the doing the reviews and Phone you at four in the morning, uh, you know, to tell you come on at uh, you coming on at two o'clock or whatever. I'm still doing that, you know. Nothing is gonna change, and uh, I can promise you that the people, you know, the, the, the I'm gonna keep in touch with, you know, because I I do genuinely, uh, you know, I do genuinely love everybody that sort of support support me and like. You've all got a special place in my heart because, as I said, you know, um, I my confidence has grown has grown absolutely tremendously. But uh, 
you know, I couldn't do this with the grassroots sort of thing, you know? No, absolutely. Absolutely, mate. And, you know, you've put in all the hard work. It's, uh, what is it now, your fourth or fifth year on YouTube? Uh, 16th of uh, March, 2016. Wow. Yeah. So you have been going a long time at this uh, in terms of and been working hard at it, mate. And, you know, it, it, it's nice doing it. But like I said, it was it was something that, you know, in the beginning it, it helped with your anxiety and it was just a confidence thing. It's now just grown into a platform where you can meet like-minded people, you can share experiences and you're getting these incredible experiences to chat F1 with some great people. And I, I think it's probably, you know, a, a good point or place where to round off this interview, uh, Raz, in terms of, uh, you know, because... I hope everyone's enjoyed kind of reliving it. I know obviously this meant a lot to you and you wanted to do this because you were like, you were so grateful for mm. them actually taking the time to kind of do these things to you and you wanted to almost, because yeah, I remember talking to you and it hadn't almost sunk in that you'd uh, spoken to him. So it, it, it's nice to kind of relive it. Um, still, with still, it still hasn't actually. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it, honestly, I mean, like, the, it changed the way I look. I watch Formula One completely. Um, I mean, it, it's like one thing you've got to remember is um, like the the likes of Will Buxton. Um, you know, they he so you know they always so down to earth, and they just say go for it. Um, and and. Because what you also got to remember is, um, you can't direct message them, you know, because they're, 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 you know, because of like, or, you know, because of like, you know, they, they, otherwise they would get hundreds of people, you know, like um, messaging them. But you know, it's like, I, I said to Natalie, I said uh, when I first tweeted, I said. I can't message you, and then I, uh, she, she, she sort of um, enabled me on a direct chat. You know, even something like that, or you know, even you know, it, it's it's not just about sort of them coming on, you know, them coming on, but it's 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 because I feel privileged in a way. I feel I, I really do, and and. Um, uh, I mean, you know, when I was when I was born 36, 36 years ago, I mean, the doctors gave me 12 percent of survivor chance within the first five hours, um, and and uh, I was I was gonna be like really disabled, you know, what I mean? like mentally, physically, or you know, and then look look at me like thirty six years later, um, you know, and then it's this whole YouTube thing and the, the whole Formula One thing hasn't just helped me out mentally, it helped me out on a daily basis sort of dealing with, because now dealing with life, you know, now, now I don't cry because I'm, I'm depressed or something, now, now I'm crying through happiness or now, or now, uh, now I don't think, you know, um, you know, now I don't think uh, um, that I don't want to live no more. That now I think about, um, you know, um, how, how can I get the next interview? You know, in so it's it's done a lot more than it's done a lot more than uh, just help me out on, you know, on a on a, you know, it's uh, it's helping me out on a daily basis. Um, you know, and and. Even, even to the point that people um, treat me differently, um, you know, because I've, I, 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 honestly, this is no word of a lie. Um, I went to the shop the other day. Um, I went to town the other day, and um, and um, some person stopped me and says, "You're the guy that." You're the guy 
that does the unplanned Formula One check and you did an interview with where Buxton and Natalie pink in the air, you know, and then can we have a can we have a selfie with you and like, you know, and I'm just thinking this is like t- surreal. Um because I never expected it. Yeah, I bet, mate. I bet you've never expected it. But that's that's really cool. And it just shows, uh, look, you're a celebrity yourself there, mate, uh, in terms of, look, people stopping you for selfies. Check you out uh, yeah. in terms of thing. But, mate, it's incredible. And I'm obviously, you know, from hey, you were one of the first guys who would uh, collaborate uh, with me on F1 YouTube and obviously we have a great friendship from it and it's it's been fantastic kind of seeing you so, have these opportunities and so, yeah I, I'm so happy for you mate so I'm going to do a question for you now I'm going to I'm going to oh, uh, Raz take over I'm going to throw it back um, what what what, um, what do you think about the first interview um, that I did with with uh, Matty and the last interview or the last one so far I did with Will. I would say your confidence is the big one that I've definitely seen grown uh, on here. From the first one, you were still obviously confident in, in terms of their own, but you know, it it was kind of a steady flow, but I don't know, just maybe in the questions that you were asking uh, Will Buxton and in the way that it bounced and the flow of the interview was just, it, it had improved. And, you know, that's that's the way you do things. You, you keep doing things and you improve and you get better. And that's, that's certainly the case where it's happened in your kind of interview styles. And, yeah, it, it's been great to watch that as a fan of your channel and obviously as your yeah, mate as well. So where where do you see it in where do you see it in about two years time? Oh God, I've no idea. Obviously, you'll be um, down doing the uh, replacing Ted Kravitz. No, you won't. Um, yeah, you, you'll be there doing Sky interviews with all. You'll you'll be the feature interview guy. You'll be doing the drivers when they have a go to guy. You're going to be the one interviewing. Now I I don't know, mate. The world's the oyster. We'll we'll see. But I hope, obviously, in that time you've continued to grow as a channel and you had the experience of speaking to some more amazing guests a uh, uh, question for you if you had if you had three people yeah who you want me to go after to try and get on which one would they be oh look you you put me on the spot here who do you go well obviously as a fernando alonso fan I would love you to interview Fernando Alonso. I'd also, with your Williams link, like you to interview Claire Williams. Or uh, I, I think that would be a great one and a great chat for you. And I know for you, uh, with your gem links, and you'd, you, you'd quite like it uh, on there, Nico Hulkenberg. I'd love to see those three for you. Yes. And uh, I also, the thing is, that's what I, that's what I mean. Yeah. I tweeted all of them, yeah, but um, rather than, uh, you know, Nick Eichenberg, um, I've, I've sent him, I've emailed his management, I've also emailed the, 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 the management, Nick Rosberg, because so, I think he, he would be great to have one, um, I, I really enjoyed the last, the, uh, when when he did the the um, when he did the the last, you know when he when he did the pantry for Sky and uh, I think it was it's just a laugh you know and it just it, he was he, brilliant yeah absolutely I mean I I would love to have him on and uh, I I will try and find a way of getting Nico Hulkenberg on and um, I did I I don't know whether you did no but I. But I did actually also um, email uh, Racing Point. Wow, that'd be cool to get. Um, but the thing is, right? It's just like their their response was, "Oh, they haven't got any 
time slot available. But the thing is, the the main what I'm what I'm trying to say is, yeah, it's it's for for me. Can you believe that? Can you just put yourself in my shoes, like because I I never expected this. Yeah, I, I was gonna. I, the doctors gave me ten, twelve. You know, ten percent of survivor chance in the first twelve hours, or twelve percent or whatever it was. Yeah, so I, I I wasn't even gonna. I was barely gonna live, but now I'm sort of. You know, I I still can't believe. Uh, you know, now that now now I'm actually getting answers from Formula One teams. You know, what I mean? like it, it's it's sort of a bit unbelievable stuff. Yeah, mate, I bet absolutely. But I have no doubt that there are going to be more great interviews on your channel, and that you're going to find a way of doing it. Because hey, you've you've now got track records of it, and this was you've now got a great portfolio. Of great interviews with people uh, going forward, and it's been brilliant, mate. And those those interviews have been uh, great to watch, and I'm looking forward to the next F1 unplanned chat as well. But Raz, thank you so much for coming on today and speaking about your experience. I hope you've enjoyed it, and it was uh, what you wanted to kind of almost, um, you know, relive the experience. Yeah, I mean that was awesome. You know, I, I can't. I... As I said, I, I mean, you probably people don't believe me, but honestly, honestly, I, I couldn't have, I couldn't have um, ever dreamt about it, you know. And, and if if anybody wants to come on, um, whether they, you know, um, if they're YouTube, you know, as long as you love Formula One, as long as you and understand that my speech is sound a bit, you know, because my disability is sometimes a bit sort of affected and you don't mind that, then uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to make time for you, definitely. Um, just, um, if you want to contact me, just uh, go, go on to the, I mean, if you serious about, like, I mean, it, I, I try to, I try to sort of, um, um, uh, respond to Twitter messages, but uh, if I don't get your response to you on Twitter, then you can always go to my uh, about page and then unlock me, unlock my um, my email address from there. Yeah, on my YouTube page. So if you uh, want to send me an email, and then we can we can sort it out. Absolutely. And uh, I would highly recommend it because, Raz, it is always enjoyable chatting to you. And, guys, if you haven't already, you come across here and haven't already checked out Raz's channel, uh, you can obviously go over to his. I'll leave a link in the description down below to uh, Raz's, obviously, social medias, his Twitter he was talking about there, and obviously his channel. And please do go and drop him a subscribe. You will enjoy those uh, F1 unplanned chats. They are always great ones for F1 fans, it's just a good chat about F1. It's brilliant. But Raz, thank you again so much for coming on. Um, really do appreciate it. And I'm so happy again for obviously this experience for you. It's it's made you very happy. And I'd I I know it's uh it, it's been an awesome experience and hopefully many more to come. Yeah, definitely, mate. And and I I love your content and I love I love being on your channel and I like you know, I just want to say a massive thank you to the whole F1 community because, you know, as I said before, you know, you don't give a monkey's arm in a wheelchair. You, you know, we just we just talk about Formula 1. You, you guys see me for who I am and uh, it, it's really sort of a pleasure to be part of it. Oh, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. We're all F1 fans at the end of the day and that's all that matters and we just... <sighs> here talking about the sport that we love and it is great to do that but guys that is it for today's interview i hope you've enjoyed it obviously uh getting to know raz a little bit more and obviously talking about his recent experience uh some of the interviews he's done and how he kind of approaches those type of things it's uh it's been a really kind of good insight and as always mate it's uh great chatting to you 
But if you're new around here or if you uh, haven't done so already, um, make sure you kind of subscribe to this channel as well and drop it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's video. But that's it from me and Raz today, guys. So for now, UF1 fans, keep racing.